So before we jump in, I want to introduce myself. My name is Sunday Gardner, the online travel boss. I come to you every week. I'll be here and I talk all things launching, operating, and marketing and mindset for a profitable travel business. All right. I'm not going to ignore the elephant in the room, right? COVID has hit the travel industry like no no other thing could ever have hit the travel industry. You may be asking yourself, is this even the time to grow my business, right? Should I even worry about it? Should I just throw up the, you know, throw up my, uh, throw my hands up and run away and be like, I, I can't do that this year because COVID's kicking me in the ass and this is not the time. And I will say, don't do that. Don't do that. Stop. Don't do that. COVID is a temporary situation. COVID is not going to kill the travel industry. It has certainly hampered us dramatically. It's certainly um, impacted us dramatically. I know of many people that it's impacted on a very personal level, COVID has, but it will not kill this industry. And the best thing that you can do um, while we are in this sort of down time is to prepare your organizations, prepare your businesses um, to be ready for the greatness that's to come because I really do believe that, that um, there's so much pent up energy for travel. And as soon as I believe that the vaccines, plural, that they've got in place, the travel industry will not only come back, it'll come back strongly. And for those that are using this time accurately to prepare are going to be those travel agencies that you look up five years from now, 10 years from now that can say that they weathered the COVID storm and not only that they use the time for good and not evil, right? They use the time to prepare themselves for greatness, right? So my goals scare the hell out of me. The things that we want to accomplish this year, given even in a pandemic, it scares me a little bit. I think it scares my team, but that's okay because we're accurately prepared to weather the storm and we're accurately prepared to achieve what it is that we've set out to achieve. So are you guys ready to get started? Let me know in the comments. Give me some love if you are. So what I want to do is... Um, I want to talk about some things that we should sort of ground ourselves in before we talk about the, the three ways, right? What I want to do is talk about the difference between a startup and a agency that is ready for growth. Many of you guys jump into entrepreneurship assuming that you're ready for growth and the reality is that you are not. So let's talk about you understanding which phase of this business you are in. Now, what I will tell you is, is you can be in startup and still be doing some of the things that I'm talking about um, in growth when we get there. But what I want to say is, is, if you're in startup, your focus is going to be different than it is when you are in growth mode. Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. So let's talk about what the definition or what it means to be in startup mode versus growth mode. Okay. So start Startup mode usually are those travel business owners that have been in business for zero to 18 months. You could be upwards to two years. I still, I have met many travel agencies, business owners who've been in business for three, five years, and they still are in startup mode, right? So time is not necessarily the only factor, but normally startup is between zero to two years, a little less than two years, right? You've had zero to little sales, right? You haven't really started the sales engine, right? Where you're booking regularly, maybe you're quoting regularly. And if you're in startup mode, most of the startups don't have agency fees because they don't know one that they can. Two, they're scared to charge. And three, they think that because they're an infant in the business that they shouldn't charge, right? So many startups are not charging agency fees. And what you will find quickly that your time is worth effort, right? The effort that you put in to hone your craft is worth the value of, and probably more than what you're charging in agency fees. But normally you've zero to little sales, right? You, you're not reporting any sales. You, um, you haven't really established the foundation. And if you are new to me, you may not know what a foundation is, but you don't have a niche, 
you don't know who your audience is. You don't, you don't, you haven't really formed your business legally. You, you know, you're probably operating exclusively underneath your name and your host agency. You don't do really any marketing or you just probably tell a few people and you're just kind of, you just, you newbies, right? You're like, you're an infant in diapers, right? That's what I want you to think of in startup mode. And again, time, because I know a lot of adults who really are not adulting, right? Right. So there are a lot of businesses that are really not business thing, if that's such a word, right? Right. There are a lot of businesses that are operating as hobbies, right? And I did a whole training on that a couple of weeks ago. And if you're in startup mode, that's okay. I'm not, I'm not criticizing you. I'm not, you know, trying to throw shade at you, but I want you to recognize that you're in startup mode, right? So if you're in startup mode and any of those things that I just said resonate with you, type startup. Okay. Now growth mode is, is that you've been in business for two years or greater, right? So we definitely have a time at differentiator there, right? You are reporting sales annually, right? They may not be at your number that you want. You may, but you are reporting sales. You have booked clients. You have made some sales. You've seen some success. So you know that you can make money at this thing called being a travel professional, right? You may be with a host agency or you may not be. You may be independent, right? You have your basics down. You're not trying to figure out what terms and conditions mean. You know what that means. You're not trying to figure out how you're going to track your bookings. You already know how to do that, right? You you know all of that, right? The basic stuff about running a business, you got that down, right? That's growth. You've probably seen some profitability, right? So maybe you're at zero to, you know, one to maybe 5% profitability. You know, I'm not going to put a number on it, but you may be profitable at this point. The problem is though, when you're in growth mode and you don't really have a process by which you're getting through this phase of your business, there's inconsistency there. If you have inconsistency in your numbers, you're seeing that sort of yo-yo, yo-yoing in your numbers. You really don't track your numbers, right? You don't really have sales goals. Sales is not even something you think of, right? You could still be, you know, not in startup, but growth. Because what you want to do in growth is nail that in. You want to bring all of that in, right? You want to know what your numbers are. You want to know those things that are going to um, move the needle. You want to know, you want consistency in your numbers, right? Growth is, you know, going like this, right? That's the growth mode, right? And then the third stage, because there's actually multiple stages, maturity, right? Uh, and most of the people that are inside of this group are not in the mature phase. They're in the either startup or the growth phase. But I'm just going to talk about uh, mature phases, right? You've, you, you're, you've been in the market. You've identified who your audience is. You know, your audience is already familiar with you. You are not seeing that sort of compounded growth that you saw in the years before, but it's steady growth, right? It's consistent. Your cash reserves are greater uh, than your profit, but there's consistency. And then the last phase is that, you know, you're either trying to sell off or whatever. But like, like I said, most of you guys are either going to be in either pre-startup, startup, or growth, right? And so today's message is primarily for the growth I want the startups to listen to the message because you can be working on these things that are in the growth mode, start to lay the foundation for those things so that you ensure that when you get done with your foundational items, you're ready to just hit the ground running, if that makes sense. All right, let's get to the three ways to grow your travel business. The first and foremost, which I hope you could predict, but is one of the most important, is you focus on sales and marketing. Your focus, I want you to write, you're focused on sales and marketing. Realize what I said. You're not focused on taking supplier training. You're not focused on building a website, right? Although you could argue that your website is part of your market marketing, but you are focused on sales and marketing. Oftentimes what happens when you start your business is that you're focused on marketing, but you're not focused on selling. And we think of the word selling as icky. Like we think of the word selling as a bad term, but that is what you are. The, the successful travel agencies understand that they are 
they either are a sales engine or they have a very strong sales engine, a part of the organization. So let's talk about what a sales and marketing engine looks like, right? Or what that means to be focused on sales and marketing. You're focused on leads, right? Because that's a metric that's important. How many people... How many leads are you getting in your organization every week, every day, every month, every quarter, every year? Have you plotted that out? Do you understand what those numbers look like? Do you even know how to get that? Now, I always tell you there's two ways that you can get leads, right? You can either pay for it or you can do it organically. Many of you are deciding to do it organically, which is fine to do it organically, but realize it's going to take you longer to do it organically. I choose to pay for traffic. I choose to pay for leads. Now, there's a difference between paying for traffic than to going out there and buying an email list. I'm not suggesting going out and buying email lists. I'm not suggesting going out and buying leads because that is not the way that you want to do that. What I am suggesting is, is that you have a mechanism by which you generate leads. If the answer to that is yes, you do, or you understand that, then great. You are growing your business. Now, the problem with only focusing on leads though, is you get a great big giant email list and you don't do anything with it, right? So I have a lot of, I know a lot of people, I know a lot of people, right? I know people who they, they, they know that emails are important. They know that they should have a lead generation system, but they do nothing with their leads. They're not moving the leads down a methodic or systematic funnel to get to conversion, right? So that's what the sales process does. You're focused on lead generation, but you're also focused on nurturing those leads and moving them down a process to conversion, right? So I always say, if you're really good at getting leads, you're really good at meeting people and talking to them and building relationships, but you're not selling, you're just really good at making friends, right? You're only good at sales when you sell something, right? So that means you have to have offers. You have to be offering something for sale to the leads ultimately that you have. Now, if you're new to me, you probably haven't heard my ARC process, which is attract, relate, and convert. That process is the sales process that I teach my clients, right? How to effectively attract the right person, how to qualify them, how to nurture them, relate to them, build relationships and then ultimately convert them, right? So that's the sales process. If you aren't doing that, if you don't have a process around all of that, right, you're not going to grow, period, end of story. A lot of people understand that they need to get leads, but then they don't either understand how to qualify those leads or they don't know how to move them to the next stage, which is relationship value add, right? And then an invitation to meet or buy, right? That's sort of the next steps that you need to get to, right? So it's great to have friends. It's great to get have a lead generation system, but if you're not moving them down the ray, you're not going to grow, right? I mean, when I first started in the online space, I was really good at, believe it or not, I will tell you, I wasn't really a salesperson. Like I never, I was that person who thought that sales was icky. I was that person that thought that sales, I wanted to stay as far away from sales. And I would always tell myself, I'm not a good salesperson. I, I no, 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 I'm not. I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want you just to buy it, right? Just figure it. Like I'm going to come, I'm going to show up, you know, and then buy my stuff. That's kind of how I wanted to work, right? I really didn't, didn't really understand the whole no like and trust, trust factor that I wanted wanted to create with my prospective clients and my existing clients, I didn't really understand that process. So even though I was really good at getting leads, I was good at attracting, I was really bad at the relationship part. I was really bad at the conversion part, right? So I had to learn how to be good at relationship building online and how to convert online, right? Does that make sense? So it's one thing to attract And many of you guys who are in this business are already good in-person attractors, if that makes any sense. You're really good at talking to people when you are with them face-to-face. But the reality is COVID has taught us that if you want to be successful, you got to be able to pivot and do this thing online, right? Do this thing online and to be able to attract people that you can't meet on a regular basis and still attract them to your business and still be able to relate to them, convert them and convert them to uh, paying clients. Successful online travel business owners have that down, right? And in the growth stage, that's what you want to focus on is your ability to attract, relate and convert, right? So you can't just be good at attraction, 
like, and so my story did finish it is I was really good at attraction, right? So I had really big giant email lists, but I didn't like to email market. <laughs> like, so I didn't like to send out emails, right? I didn't like to send out emails to people. So I wasn't converting. I wasn't building relationships. So I'd have like a thousand, you know, I'd spend thousands of dollars on Facebook ads and then wasn't converting right? Wasn't selling anything. I wasn't even offering anything because I wasn't using the email list, right? Had a Facebook group full of thousands of people and was afraid to show up live, right? For many years, that was my story, right? So I would spend the money, right? So I knew about attraction. I knew about paid advertising, but I didn't, I, I was scared to relate. I was, you know, I was, I didn't consider myself a seller. So I definitely didn't want to do phone calls, didn't want to talk to anybody, you know, on the, I didn't want to talk to anybody in messenger, didn't want to talk to anybody in person. I was afraid of the sales process. But once I embraced the sales process and really realize that it doesn't have to be an icky process, right? Icky is such a, such a, it's such a weird word, right? It doesn't have to be an icky process, right? It's just a part of the, it's a part of the package, right? It's a part of the package of being a business owner. I'm really good at in-person selling, right? But I was not very good at it online. And so until I was able to change my mindset, change the way that I came to the table, everything in my business changed, right? Same thing for you. You guys are in the online space. Many of I mean, the majority of you, if not all of you, are have online travel businesses. Most of you don't have brick and mortar. Some of you do, but the majority of you are online online travel entrepreneurs. So in that space, you've got to be able to do what I just said. You need to be able to attract online. You need to be able to relate online, and you need to be able to convert online effectively in order to grow. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. Then a number two item is, is that you need to be able to understand your numbers and chase after the right number, right? So many of you guys are chasing after sales instead of the indicators that lead to sales, right? So leads lead to sales. So you should be chasing after leads. You should, so part of my sales process is we do leads, we do nurture sequences, and then we invite to uh, strategy calls and then we close. That's, that's our sales process, right? So our indicators are leads, right? Group members is another indicator for us. Another indicator is strategy calls, right? So I'm not necessarily concerned about sales. I'm necessary. I'm concerned about those metrics that impact sales. Does that make sense? I want you guys to understand the distinction. I'm focused not on sales. I'm focused on the indicators that lead to sales, right? So whatever your sales process is, focus not on the end game, Focus on the things and the activities that are going to get you to the end game, right? Know those numbers and know those numbers well, right? I know how many leads we get per day. I know what our conversion from leads to calls are, right? I know that from leads to close what our number is, right? So when I want to impact my end number, I start with impacting the top number or working on processes that are going to increase our uh, call conversion or cr increase our, you know, group member numbers. Does that make sense, right? I'm focused on the right metrics that are going to get to my goals. I'm not focused on the end goal. So that's number two. If you want to grow, you need to focus on sales and marketing, number one. Number two, you've got to know your numbers and focus on the right key indicators that are going to move the numbers. So it's one thing to say, I want to make $10,000 a month in sales in my travel business, right? So that means it's probably a mix of commission and fees, right? Well, what is the mix? What is the average ticket rate that you're doing, right? What What is the mix? Is it an 80-20 mix? Is it a 90-10% mix, right? 10% fees or 90% fees and 10% commission. What's your mix, right? How many leads do you need? What are you converting at from, uh, you know, from, you know, if you're doing email marketing, how many um, emails are you getting per day, right? What does the engine to do that? How do you convert from email to calls? How many are you doing and what's the percentage of that, right? How many calls are you closing, right? What's the percentage of that? Once you know those numbers, things in your life are going to be much more predictable because based on that, then you know what to change 
one, you know, what to change and you know what to influence, right? Is it your leads that you need to influence? Maybe it's your skills on closing uh, calls. Maybe it's your skills with talking to people. Maybe it's your relationship skills, whatever that is. And when you know the numbers and you start tracking it, then you can influence it, but you can't influence ignorance. <laughs> like you can't influence lack of knowledge, right? You can't, you can't change it if you don't know it, right? You can't do better if you don't know better, right? That's what you want to do if you're in the growth mode is you know your numbers, right? So for the people who told me that they were in the growth mode, do you know your numbers? Do you know the activities that influence your numbers and are you tracking those numbers? But the reality is, is that if you want to grow and you want to grow exponentially upward, right, as opposed to staying stagnant or not growing at all, you want to get a handle of those numbers. You want to understand what the numbers that you need to track and then you need to track them and you need to be focused on the right indicators, right? Okay, so then the very last thing, and then I'm going to skedaddle out of here, is is you need to invest in strategy and knowledge, right? So in growth mode, I want to spend the least amount of time to get the greatest amount of effort. Let me say that again. I want to spend the least amount of time and the least amount of money to get the greatest amount of effort, right? Or results, right? Let me say it that way. Least amount of money and time to get the greatest amount of results. And the way that I do that now is investing in strategy and knowledge. And what do I mean by that, right? I don't know everything. I know that's a shock. (laughs) It's a shock, right? I have to look at myself every day in the mirror and say, Sunday, you don't know everything. And as a result of you don't know, uh, of you not knowing everything, What are you going to do to fill those gaps? Because there's a lot of gaps that I have, right? I just told you sales and marketing. Uh, Marketing I had down, like like I said, I was able to attract. But, you know, the whole sales engine, I had to hire that. I had to hire a coach to be able to get me to understand that no matter how icky I may think sales is, that's what I'm in it to do. If I'm going to hit the goals that I want, we've got to reorganize our entire organization around sales. Right. And that's what we did. And that's what we do. Everything that we do is is around the selling and marketing process. Right. And so that is where I have been able to see the most growth. And that's exactly where you will, too. Right. So I invest in strategy and knowledge. Right. I don't invest in. And, and as I, you know, as our organization gets larger, as I get more clients, it, it becomes of, I can't even absorb any more knowledge, right? I'm getting to the point that I can't even absorb any more knowledge. Then I'm going to be investing in professionals. So there's two ways that you can invest in strategy and knowledge, right? You can invest in strategy and knowledge so that you know it and you do it, right? Or maybe you invest in knowledge for your team to know it and do it, or you can hire a professional to do it for you. Those are the two ways that you can invest, right? You can invest in programs, training, coaching, whatever that is that will teach you how to do it and then you start doing it yourself or you hire someone and you outsource the whole, you hire a professional that, you know, has a proven track record and you hire them and outsource them and hold them accountable for the results that you're looking for, right? So you can either hire it to learn it or you can hire it to have them do it for you, right? So it's do it for you or do it yourself. But if you do it yourself, you know, there's two ways you can do it yourself. You cannot hire someone, which is going to waste you a lot of time and money, right? Time and money. So if you do it yourself and you don't know how to do it yourself and you go out there and you learn it yourself, it's going to waste you time and money. I've been there, done that, right? Or two, you hire expertise to teach you how to do it, right? So those are your options, right? There really are no other options. Or you could do nothing, which is some of you who are at zero are doing nothing. We're probably in that regard. And if you decide to do nothing, then you're not going to grow, right? Period. End of story. But if you really want to grow and you want to see exponential growth in your business, invest in strategy and knowledge and decide which way you want to go, right? There's some things that I want to learn, right? And I will implement inside of our organization. And then there's some things that I will outsource holistically. I don't want that. I'm not interested in getting it in my company. I don't even want to worry about it. Like, and I'll give you an example. Like we outsource a hundred percent of our web development. I'm not hiring somebody in the team to do that. I got a company that does all of our web page development and boom, I don't do it. 
and I know how to do it and I could save myself money, but I don't have the time to do it. It's not, it, the, the amount of time it takes me to get that thing done is cheaper for me to hire a company to handle all of our web development than for me to do it, right? As the leader of your organization, your time is worth hundreds of dollars, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars per hour, right? So the time that you are not selling or working on your sales process and you're doing these other tasks that are not directly related to sales and marketing is costing you money. Every single day that you are working on an activity that's not directed to sales, directly related to sales as the owner, right? And you don't outsource selling. You have an outs- you don't have a sales team. You don't have any of that, right? And you're not selling or doing some sort of sales activity. It's costing you money. I want you to say it again. It's costing you money, right? Because that means you are spending your strategic mind, time, and effort on tasks that you could probably hire out for minimum wage or less if you do it internationally, And you're doing those tasks, right? That's costing you dollars, right? So I'd rather invest in knowledge to acquire it so I can do that task better, right? Or I'm outsourcing it to a professional. So we decided, I decided, web development is something we're not doing in-house. We don't do it. I'm not going to, it's not likely I'm going to ever bring it in-house. I'll probably always have a, a... a team of people outside of my company that d- does our web development, right? So that's what we've decided. But we made strategic decisions on what we're bringing in house and what we're going to work on outside, right? And that's because we're in growth mode, right? If you're in startup mode, you don't have the money or the time to be talking about the stuff that I'm talking about. You need to get, you know, you need to get some basic steps in, right? So that's the difference of, uh, in terms of where you are in your business, right? So hopefully that makes sense, right? Because many of you are like, well, I can do that and be in startup mode, right? But the reality is your focus is not on startup. You're, I mean, when you're in, when you're in startup mode, your focus is not on resources at this point. Your focus needs to be on getting the basics in place. You need to determine what your niche is. You need to determine who your audience is. You need to determine who the heck you even want to make an offer to, right? You need to determine what your offers are. You need to understand terms and conditions. You, I mean, your focus is on a whole set of different priorities when you're in startup versus when you're in growth. Growth, you've got the bandwidth to now think about how am I going to implement in a sales organization, right? I don't like selling. So maybe ultimately I want a sales team. Well, how am I going to do that? Right? Maybe I do want sub agents, right? Or maybe I just want sellers, right? That go in, they do all of the booking and the quoting for me and they manage the relationship, uh, you know, of people that are my leads. Maybe that's what you do, right? That's what you have the luxury of doing when you're in growth mode. Right. So before I go, I just want to make sure. Does that make sense to everybody? Are you guys following that? How are you guys feeling about that? Let me know in the comments. Give me some hearts. Give me something to let me know how you guys are feeling about what you've learned today. Talk to you soon. If you like this episode, then share it. Sharing is caring and don't keep it to yourself. Spread the word. Another way to support this channel is to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, or leave us a message. Join us inside of our free Facebook group, The Travel Boss Group. Better yet, if you think you need help, schedule your free travel business launch diagnostic call. Links are mentioned below. This has been Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss. See you again on the next episode of Online Travel Boss TV.